Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello and welcome to another episode of the I Create Daily podcast, a movement for creators serious about their art. I'm Devani. And I'm Leora. We discovered our artist guest today when perusing top sellers on Etsy. Ingrid Sanchez is a Mexican artist based in London, UK. Of course, it immediately caught our attention that Ingrid illustrates and paints every day using watercolors and mixed media. We love her art and that she gains inspiration from nature and a daily dose of meditation. Ingrid loves the moon, plants of every kind, good weather, yoga, and tea, and sells her beautiful art on her website and Etsy store. For a truly delightful visual, whoops, sorry, I lost my place. For a truly delightful visual, visual treat of Ingrid's latest collections, upcoming workshops, commissions, collaborations, and inspiration, you can visit her website and Etsy store, which we'll link here in the show notes. But if you're at your computer and want to peruse while listening to this interview, you can go to IngridSanchez.com, and that's spelled I N G R I D. And then Sanchez spelled S A N C H E Z dot com or on Instagram at Creative Ingrid. Well, welcome, Ingrid, and thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for the invitation. Okay. You have said already everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's so much more to the story. Yeah. We know there is, and we're looking forward to diving into that. So let's just let's dive in. How did you start painting every day, doing your creative work every day? Um, there are two stories. Do you want the long one and the short one? Let's give, just go with the long one. Yeah, let's do the full story because a lot of our audience are artists and they really want to know the story of other successful artists and yeah. how you came to be doing what you're doing. So yeah, let's hear the long one. Okay, so um, I always have interest in painting and that was since I was very, very young. So I basically got my very first set of oil painting when I was eight mm. and um, the story is very funny because I don't know where did I got that set I think I set like my lunch uh, money or something and I bought myself <laughs> it, said, it was not for children and it was oils mm. which is kind of a complicated thing to do if you're young yeah um, so I always had interest in the feet and um, if you visit my parents house now you will see like Paint everywhere, like not paintings, paint on the walls, you know. <laughs> because I don't have, a, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, so eventually, my parents gave me this room uh, in the back of the house, which was like a storage place. Um, so they fixed it for me, and that was uh, that became my studio for many years. And I would spend hours and hours painting. Like my dad would literally come to me and ask me to please come back to the house <laughs> see my time or I spent all my time there. I just love it. Um, but eventually uh, I stopped when it was time to go to university. Uh, I didn't study art, I studied design. And then as things happen, you get busy with life. I started working and I stopped painting for years. Everything came back four years ago. So four years ago, I started painting again. Mm. They had a big pause in between. Wow. Mm -hmm. So why did you, like, when did, about how old were you when you stopped? Why did you stop? And then how long before then for when you started again? Yeah, um, I don't come from a family of artists. Like, my family are lawyers and doctors. So I was not really encouraged to study art. My dad always told me, you know, you can be an architect and then have a hobby at home and you can paint there. So that was very, like, in my mind, that was planted. That was a seed that was planted and it was a really, really bad seed for me mm -hmm. because it brought a lot of, um, you know, questions about what can you do with an art if you not, uh, can actually make a living from it. Mm -hmm. So I think it was, I was around 17, 18 
uh, when it was time to go to co university and I took time off because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I got very confused. So I started traveling for a couple of years um, before I decided what I wanted to do. And the funny thing is that in that time I was painting and I was actually selling my paints. Wow. Um, but then, uh, yeah, when I realized it's time to go and decide what I want to do, I went for the safest route, or I thought it was the safest route. So I studied information design. And, um, and when I was in university, I didn't paint it at all. I was like just doing, you know, what you have to do. Now, Ingrid, uh, you said you were studying what kind of design? Information design. Information design. And so what, what was that? What, what I is... know. It's such, it's such a weird career. Um, <laughs> I think it was born in, in Germany, and you couldn't find anywhere but Germany, England, and Mexico. And it was like this weird thing they thought they needed to do because you now had like all the new tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, and Design. So it was no more graphic design because you didn't work just purely with your hands, like you had like new technologies. Mm -hmm. So it was like this weird combination of things. So it was also not that great because I knew a little bit of everything. I knew a little bit of, you know, um, programming for the computers and web, web design and a little, very little of illustration. Um, and yeah, I think they disappeared the career like after three years. Yeah. It's back to be a uh, graphic. Yeah. In graphic design. So we were an experiment, basically. Yes, basically. So, so okay, so after three years of doing that, going to school and working in that industry, then how did you make the transition? Uh, was it gradual? Did you start, like, painting and then growing your art business in your spare time on weekends and nights? Or how did that transition take place? Yeah, um, when I finished um, university, I moved to Barcelona. And I studied a master's in book publishing. <laughs> That's nothing to do again. Right, right. What I wanted to do. But it was great because uh, I found a job in 2008 when the crisis was like a very big deal. So I was very, very lucky to find a job. Um, so I, I stayed in that job for four or five years, I'm not sure. And I was super unhappy. I was very, very unhappy, frustrated. I started feeling the whole thing in my body. I started having, having like back pain. And that's when I had for the first time the thought of doing something different. Mm -hmm. and, um, and one of the first things uh, is that I went to a yoga class. And, um, and I was just in love with the practice and I studied a teacher training. That is a very important step in my life because uh, yoga has changed completely the way I, I see things now. Mm -hmm. And it made me more, first of all, aware of my body, but also, um, I don't know, I think more about my well-being now than I think I was doing it before. Mm -hmm. um, in this transition, uh, my husband and I, and I decided to come to England. So we moved to London. I quit my job. I was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I came to London. And when I was here, I realized I'm very lucky because I can do what I was doing in Spain. And I don't want to do it anymore. So um, I had an Etsy account because I, I was buying stuff when I was in Spain. And a friend of mine told me uh, that that might be a good platform for me. So I was kind of experimenting with Etsy. And I was also very interested in crochet at that time, in wool and crochet. So I opened a shop in, in, in Portobello Road Market, which is famous uh, because of the movie Notting Hill. All the movie of Notting Hill is, is filmed in that road. And I used to live in that road. So I thought, okay, let's open a shop in the market and see what happens. <laughs> and it was uh, one. <laughs> it was a terrible investment in terms of money because it didn't work. Right. But it was a great, great thing for me to learn because it made me open a business account. It made me, you know, think about Etsy as a business. 
it also made me just go out in the community and see how things work in terms of small business mm -hmm. and get in touch with other makers. Um, but obviously I needed to make like an income. So I was also looking for yoga centers. And I found this um, yoga uh, school that was focused for special needs. So it was a charity. Um, uh, and they were closing because they, they, were, they had problems, monetary problems. They were um, bankrupt. So, and they were very close from me. So I sent an email telling them, you know, I'm here, I'm your neighbor, and I have a lot of time. So if you need help, I can help. Uh, but I, I was thinking about cleaning and moving boxes. Or things like that. <laughs> and when, they arrived, when I arrived, they told me, oh, no, we are looking for, we are closing as a charity, but we are trying to open as a business. As a company, so we can keep running the work with the children, and, and we are actually need a lot of help. What can you do? And it was like, I can do everything. I'm a designer. Like, yeah. I can do the logo. I can do the website. Yeah. Um, so I basically offered my uh, my work for free because I knew they were in trouble. But I asked if this works. I need a job. You know, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking for a job. Mm -hmm. um, so eventually it worked and I became the, the brand manager of the center. Awesome. Um, but obviously uh, there was no money. So I was doing the graphics. I was doing the website. I learned how to do websites by doing that website. And it was a really good school again for me. So that the, all this is the basis of what I have now. Yeah. Um, and that, and at some point we wanted to have a blog and, and we didn't have money for, to pay anyone for photos and I didn't want to take anything from Google. So I offer, you know, I can make illustrations and we can put that on the blog. Mm -hmm. So I was doing a, an illustration a week and one of the girls in the center was writing the blog. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started my illustrations again. Wow. So... Wow, that's a big journey, and you learn so many skills along the way that kind of go into your art, your own art business. What I'm curious, what did your parents think about the transition? Because they were initially telling you, you know, do a do something sensible <laughs> as a career, and you can do your art on the side. But when you left the publishing career and then pursued art even though at first it was through the yoga studio and helping them and being their brand manager, what reaction did you get from your family, especially your parents? Um, I became independent very, very young. I, even though they helped me with, uh, with university, by the age of 17, I was independent. Mm. So I was, my, I was making a proper living for myself. Like I, I worked as a waitress for years. And so I think they were kind of used to me doing weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling very young, like, you know, they, they lost me completely in that way. Like, I was making my own decisions. Yeah. Um, so, I, and I think they knew I was very, very unhappy in my job. Yes. So, I think they were happy that I was trying to find my way doing something else. That's yeah. so good. And it seems like your husband was supportive as well, which really helped, right? Yeah, he's being amazing. I mean... Um, when I told him <laughs> that I wanted to do crochet for a living, he was like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> and when I told him, like, every time I have came with a crazy idea, he's up for it. So that's oh, that's thing amazing. That yeah. makes such a difference. Yeah. Wow, that's so helpful. Yeah, what, what we love so much about your story, too, is because one of the quotes that we use often in the I Create Daily brand is, it is in the journey that the way becomes more clear. And it's like, there's no, there's no way to plot the course that you just described. And, you know, even the things that you did during those years that were not in the venue that you and knew you wanted to end up in, like you said, you learned everything that led to the next thing that led to the next thing. Yeah. Um, right. Even if it wasn't like the work you wanted or enjoyed doing the most at the time. Yes. It's all building skills. It's a whole journey. Yeah. yeah. 
it's all a journey and you were so even though i mean in a way we just consider that real life school you know so you were you didn't incur any kind of you, know, you didn't have to pay to go to school uh you weren't getting paid but you were learning so essentially it was like learning on the job training uh, or learning in school and then you were able to apply that and then that led to a paid job as well as you're honing your own art skills right yeah exactly uh, i always say that everything is an investment Mm -hmm. Everything, it doesn't matter if it looks like it's uh, something that is not working, you are learning something. Yes. But you have to be clever and know how to use that to right. make it work. Right. Well, before we get on to more of your creative journey and your selling on Etsy, I am just curious about like, uh, UK is very different than Mexico <laughs> and even than Spain as far as climate and all that, right? For someone who loves nature and outdoors, they have, of course, beautiful terrain, but London. Uh, you know, it's a big city and can be quite, you know, chilly and windy. <laughs> yeah. How did you um, end up there and how do you like it? When I met my husband, uh, we met in Mexico, actually. He's, he's from here. He's, he's, from, he's English, but we met in Mexico. Um, the first time I visited him, it was winter. And I think it was one of the coldest winters. And I told him, I will never, never <laughs> live in this city. <laughs> it was horrible. I had the worst of the time. Like it was so cold, and they lost my luggage. I remember, so I didn't have proper clothes with me. No. And uh, yeah, so when we decided that we wanted to to live together, um, he oh, he offered me to do it in Barcelona. Um, <laughs> so that's why we lived in Barcelona first. So I think it was a um, it was the right thing to do because it was a very good step for me. Yes. To know, like I, you know, I never so experienced the change of seasons in my life until I lived in Barcelona. So it was a very good step for me. Yeah. And then when we moved to London, I was really wanting to leave Barcelona because I was very unhappy in, in my journey there. So yeah. I was looking forward to come here. Yeah. And, and this country has been amazing with me in, in every sense. Good. So... I don't really mind the weather. Fantastic. It's fine. I'm cool with it. Yeah. Well, Sometimes the first impression isn't always, always the, right. the right one. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, then you get used to enjoying bundling up, you know, yeah. wearing worn clothes and warm yeah. boots and hats. And it's all about having the right clothes. Yeah. It makes a difference. Um, yeah. And just, I don't know, have good lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For an artist, especially. Yeah. And you're enjoying what you're doing. So I'm sure most of the time you're not even necessarily thinking like, oh, it's cold out or oh, this or that. You know, all those details, like when you actually just enjoy creating and you're enjoying the journey and the process and the stage you're in, you, the, the others are details. The rest is details. Yeah. Exactly. If you're happy, like, I mean, when you work, it doesn't matter if it's in an office or in your house. It's like, you know, you do it at least eight hours a day, 10 hours a day. So yeah. if you enjoy that part of your life, like everything it's easier from there. Yeah, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. So tell us then, how did you continue, continuing in that journey from doing the illustrations for the nonprofit organization turned into a business, then how did you migrate and how did that continue to evolve into uh, your own website and store and selling, successfully selling art? Yeah, well, I was doing the illustrations for special yoga, and um, and people start asking uh, for for art for different things. So I realized, well, actually, people like what I do. That was kind of a surprise for me. Um, but then we had the opportunity to go to live in New York for one year. Uh, it was my husband's job, and we took the chance. We took the opportunity, and I moved with my with my job. So I was doing. What I was doing here, I was doing part of from New York. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided, okay, I have half day to do whatever I want. So I'm going to do what I always wanted to do, and that was study art. Mm -hmm. um, so I basically look for artists I liked and art centers around my flat in New York. So I was spending half the day or taking workshops, or going to art school, or painting at home. So it was a really good experience because I, you have like all the materials in the world, you find them in New York. Yes. So I was basically trying everything. Nice. 
and, um, and just playing and experimenting. Um, the other important thing is that I, I bought an iPad. I, I don't have a phone. I haven't used a phone in, I don't know, eight years. So, and everybody told me, like, you should have an Instagram because you love photography. I, years ago, I used to carry like two, two or three cameras with me. I love photography. Um, and all my friends asked me, like, why you don't have Instagram? Like, that would be such an, you know, awesome uh, app for you. And I was like, well, I don't have a phone. So, you know, that's it. And then I bought my iPad um, in New York and I opened my Instagram account. And, uh, and I started I start taking photos of what I was doing. I, and for my surprise, again, people liked what I was posting. So it was kind of a nice feeling. Yeah. Um, and eventually I had to quit my job because it was too much. I, it was supposed to be part-time, but I was working all day. And I realized, you know, I'm here for one year and I need to be here. I can have, have my brand in London. Mm -hmm. So I, I quit the job and I remained as a freelancer for a while with them. Just doing the graphics. And I really stepped into the painting process. So I was painting when, all day. When you, um, when, you were, when you quit the job and you were just doing the freelance graphics, were you also already earning, were people already buying some of your work or were you still at the stage of like building your own personal art brand? Um, like was it monetizing yet and that's part of what may help make you decide to quit or was it because you got so busy wanting to pursue that and not having the other job too that was getting in the way? I was still, um, I had some clients that were looking for me uh, from some services, design services, websites or um, branding in general. I, I, get a I got a lot of, um, of those clients via the yoga center. So I was, I was working with lots of yoga teachers. And what uh, year is that? Sorry? What year was that? It was, actually, I wrote it down because I, I'm, I'm, I'm working in a blog right now and I'm writing this story. So I have here all the dates. We moved to New York in June 2015. Okay. 2015. Okay, fantastic. So basically you, okay, so then you started um, studying art um, only about 2015. But again, remember, you spent basically yeah. the first, what, 16, 17 years of your life, uh, well, you know, after eight years old, drawing and doing art, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but this was my first time that I actually you know, going to uh, an art center oh, or classes. Okay. So you didn't study, you didn't have any kind of art classes growing up then? No. Wow. Okay. I was, um, I was uh, a ballerina. I took um, 15 years of classical ballet classes. Okay. Yeah, well, so yeah. All the and all the time was there. Yeah. And there was no time for art classes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Got it. So continue then. So you, you um, yeah, go ahead. So yeah, I was, um, I, I started doing the whole painting thing. I took it very seriously in terms of, okay, I'm doing this every day, I'm taking photos. And another important step is that I decided, okay, I need a proper website for myself and I need to change the name of my Etsy shop because my, my Etsy shop was uh, Petita Cosa, which is like small thing mm -hmm. in Catalan. And um, so I was looking for a name and it was so difficult. And I decided, okay, I need a name. I'm not going to be able to change. <laughs> <laughs> so I came out with Creative Ingrid and I, I looked and it was free everywhere. It was free on Instagram, it was free on Etsy. It was, um, so, you know, I asked my husband, what do you think? And he was like, well, you are very creative and your name is Ingrid. So it kind of <laughs> works. <laughs> so I just... Change. I remember going into Etsy and my heart was like, boom. it was like, it was such a difficult momentum in my life. I don't know. <laughs> when I changed the name, it was a big step for me. And um, I was, changed the name on Etsy and on, on Instagram. Was it because the, um, it wasn't just like a simple name change? It was like, I'm taking this seriously. And like, commitment. this is the first step of I am building a career as an artist. Was that more than necessarily just the name change, like committing to that vision? 
I think it was, I put a lot of effort on Petita Cosa, a lot. And it meant a lot for me. So it was like leaving that behind. And also it was like, okay, I'm going to focus on this. Because Petita Cosa covered, it was everything. It was crochet, it was design, it was like illustrations, photography. Yeah. So it was the moment I decided, okay, I'm going to just pick, you know, watercolors or illustrations. And I'm going to leave behind everything else. Mm -hmm. So that, I think I knew it was the, the step of, you know, building a new thing for me. Mm -hmm. So you, um, so had you, when did you start learning watercolor? Was that part of your, one of the classes you took in New York? Um, I discovered watercolor uh, when I started doing the illustrations for the blog. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of an accident. Um, I think uh, I went to an art shop and I saw that there were watercolors in sale, on sale. <laughs> um, and I asked my husband, like, my husband is terrible at buying Christmas presents. So I told him, I always tell him, like, I want this. Okay. And that year it was the same. It was like, well, if you want to give me a gift, go to the shop and, you know, look for, uh, for the, um, the watercolors. They are on sale. Um, <laughs> I think they are good. So I didn't, I didn't even know anything about brands or anything. So he got that uh, for me in a Christmas. And I, I don't, we don't really celebrate Christmas here at home, but we stay, like, we watch movies. And yeah. So that Christmas, I basically just were, I was playing with the watercolors for the very, very first time. Mm. So when, when, when we moved to New York, I was looking for watercolor classes only. Okay. I, always knew, I, I also knew I wanted to focus on something different because I had lots of years of experience with oils and acrylics. So I wanted a, ch a change, and I wanted to be, like, just one thing, mm. and it was my main focus. Okay, so awesome. you started, so you took your first watercolor class in New York in 2015, yeah. um, and basically you just committed to watercolor from that time forward? Yeah, and I, I didn't, I didn't took, like, lots of classes, but I did practice every day. Like, every day I was painting, every day I was painting. Yeah. When did you start every single day? painting was it when you did the name change and you were like this is my career or were you doing that before that during your practice and workshop did you already commit in your learning process while you still were doing freelance were you like this is going to be an everyday practice I did it when I quit my job got it the moment I quit my job um I it was it was very difficult for me to do that because I always have a job or a project or something right and I what I basically do is that, or did, is that I, I set like some rules for me. And one of the rules was, I'm going to wake up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. like, I, like if I was going somewhere to work, even though I'm in, at home, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to have breakfast with my husband, and then I'm going to start working in whatever I'm working. Mm -hmm. So many days I didn't have any projects, so that was painting, right? Right. So, yeah, that was, that was, I quit one job and I started immediately with my project. Wonderful. I love how you, yeah. how disciplined and structured mm -hmm. you were and how you made your, you know, your um, avocation, your vocation, you made your job, your, like your passion for art um, to, into your job. Uh, but, you know, so there, it wasn't like a chore. It was something you wanted to do and you were serious about doing it. You know, you, you showed yourself you know like to your own self to your own mind and your own consciousness you show that you're serious about it by inculcating the daily practice and that discipline i think that's something i probably got from my from my ballet classes mm -hmm. yeah because you can't do something like that for a long period of time if you don't have first of all love for what you do and second the discipline to do it yeah yeah. And that's a very disciplined art. I mean, I'm sure all dance is a very disciplined art, but ballet is so precise, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I love just how every little layer of your journey, whether you enjoyed every part of it or not, just goes and like the ballet molded you into being a disciplined person. The learning different things in university taught you very versatile skills that you could take to the marketplace. And the yoga job taught you how to create the website, which later helped with the Etsy and your own brand like that's amazing yeah yeah we love this story so um we love to share as much as you're comfortable sharing about the yes. business side of what you do so that it helps our audience learn you know um because it's sort of like there's 
you know, there's the concept of the starving artists. And then of course there are the artists who've made it. And then there's everything in between. Um, and so if you were living on your own supporting yourself, would your art at this point in time in your art career, would it support you if it had to? Yes. Yes. Um, um, it's not, it's not a fast journey. I mean, if we talk about, I was in New York in 2015 and I, I started the whole thing as a project. You have to think that from the very first year, it was practically an investment of myself in the practice of finding my voice as an artist, um, building a website, building a, um, um, the shop on Etsy. Like it's, it was a whole building. It was building even the social media. Um, it was something that was just happening. It was a whole year. Then I came back to London and it was a whole year of saying, okay, I'm going to do this or not because there's a job that is waiting for me there. I came back and they were waiting for me. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I had the mo this moment of, I can't, I can't go back to the security of having, you know, a monthly paycheck mm -hmm. or I'm going to jump into this. And I took the decision. I'm going to go for it. Like I see potential here. Yeah. And it was another whole year of working on it, like very, very hard. And it's been only one year when it's like, okay, it works. Like now I can make a living. You know, I can pay the bills and I can take holidays. And now it works like properly as a business. But it's been a three long years of building the whole thing. Yeah. You know? Definitely. What are some of the business things? You have an Etsy shop. You're selling on your own website and you have the Instagram. And I think you're on Facebook as well. Um, what are some of the top uh, pieces of advice you have for other artists of the things you did, especially especially in the transition um, between you're doing this seriously as your own business and now you're making money? What were some of the things you really focused on doing that produced the most for your business? I think one of the things um, um, I always actually talk in my classes about is to be prepared to have the basis of everything. Because you, you never know, like a little, a little bit of my business has been a little bit of luck also. Because, um, you know, at the end of my year in New York, I had like this thing in social media going because BuzzFeed published me on Facebook and then there was like lots of little, um, you know, trendy websites that were, that were posting my paintings. Uh, but when that happened, I had a website and I had a shop. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there was like a way for me to monetize yeah, that. Definitely. If you are doing your thing and posting just for fun, whatever, and then, you know, you have the chance to be, um, to have your five minutes of fame on, on social media, but you have nothing <laughs> to send people to, yeah. then you have lost the opportunity. Yes. Yeah. You know? So I see, and I talk with lots of people that they are thinking, oh yeah, well, in the meantime, just practicing, and one day when it starts working, I'm going to have my website, and it's like, no, no, you have to have your website now. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you don't have any say, it's like, now is the time. You know, mm -hmm. so be prepared for it. If you, are serious, if you think that you want to be serious about building a business, build it. Like, don't, don't, don't look to start it Yes. when it's happening. Like, it's going to happen because you build it. That's right. Mm, yeah. Such a good point. Yeah. And then today, it's so much easier to create a website or have someone create it for a few hundred dollars than it used to be like when you started yeah. as well. So with all the themes, yeah. the WordPress themes. It, There's it, so many drag and drop options. Yes. To help yeah. yeah. It's super easy right now. Even if you don't have a website, Etsy shop, you know? Yeah. But I mean... That's right. So now you, so we wanted you to get into telling us more about your courses. Uh, well, go ahead. Go ahead and tell us about your courses, like how that started um, and you know, like what, what you do, what, you know, what kind of uh, people attend, what they're looking to learn. Yeah. Just the, the basic, the, the structure of the course. Well, when I came back uh, to London, um, I noticed that there were no workshops the way they existed in New York. Hmm. 
Um, at New York, I attended to some classes that were um, immersion, immersions of four or five hours or, you know, classes that were a month, one time a week, but they were like also like several hours in a row. And I couldn't find anything similar. And what I found was extremely, extremely expensive. So I thought, I'm going to try to build my own with all the experience I got in New York. Yeah. And from all the classes I took, I picked what I thought it was the most important thing for me um, or that um, were more useful for me uh, in a way. So, um, yeah. It was a hard thing to do because I'm, I'm very, I'm very introverted. I'm not very, very, very social person. And I was afraid that I would, you know, panic or freeze in the middle of the class. So I decided, okay, I'm going to do a small class for four people in my studio, where it's like, you know, safe space in a way. Yes. And I, I posted it on Instagram just to see... <laughs> And my surprise is that it was, it was fully booked in a week. Wow. And everybody that joined to that class were traveling. So I got people from Singapore, from oh, wow. you know, different places. And the other thing is that one of the girls um, that joined, she was a brand manager from a, a big shop, a long shop. And she was like, I saw your account and I thought, I want to do that. So I quit my job and I'm here and I want to learn. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, no pressure. Right, right. <laughs> wow. Right. Yeah. So um, it was, um, it was um, an amazing experience. I loved that first experience. And then um, a couple of weeks later, um, um, a girl from Singapore also. I get people from Singapore. She followed me and she was like, I want to, to teach, um, I want uh, you uh, to teach me how to paint your flowers. And I told her, well, I have never taught that because I think I'm not ready to teach that. I'm still learning how to make it. I'm finding my style. Mm. Um, she was like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm going to travel to London and I, I really want to take a class with you. It was like, okay, if you don't mind that maybe it's not a great class, it's fine. Like, I, can, I can open a day for you. So she came, and she was my, fa- my very first um, floral workshop. The cool thing is that she's coming back on the 27th of December with a friend mm. to take the same class. Nice. Oh, awesome. yeah. And so at the beginning, I thought, you know, this is something that is going to happen twice a year. Like, I thought two, three times a year. And now I'm teaching, like, I'm teaching that class once a month. Wow. But I have so many private classes wow. going on. Fantastic. I have I have seven classes this month. I have one class tomorrow. Wow. Private class. And that's people that come only one person to the studio wow. to learn something. Are all your courses and workshops in person? You don't do any digital yet? Or are you planning to or not really? I am yeah, it's a difficult one. When I was leaving New York, Skillshare asked me, uh, for a class, and I think the offices were kind of close where I was living. So they offered, you can come here and we do all the filming and all the edition and we do everything for you. Uh, but it, it happened when I was moving back to London. Mm. So they were like, okay, well, you can do the whole thing, you know, in London and make it your own. And I found it so difficult, I, I didn't even try. And I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do it. Uh, first of all, because my process, it's very, there's a lot of intuition there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just give people the, the, all the information they need about the medium. And, um, and I like showing the space. Like, you know, this is how I, I store the paper. This is where I have my inks. This is, these are my palettes. This is how I paint. And, you know, make it yours. Yeah. Do your own thing. I don't have a step-by-step. Yeah. Uh, if, if you look on my Instagram or my website, I don't really have tutorials uh, because I don't have a, a, a linear process. Yeah. And I think there are lots of classes around there that has this step-by-step that can help people. My process is completely different. It's just pure experimentation. Nice. So I would find very difficult to put that into a, a class that is, you know, in a platform like this. 
That's understandable. And also a lot, uh, I've seen a couple of video, a couple of the Instagram videos you do and, um, and your space, just the glimpse on the interview, if you're watching on the video is beautiful with the paintings in the background. And yeah. it seems like a lot of your art is also very, like, you're very involved and you're very connected to spirit, creative spirit, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's almost like an experience more than just, hey, I'm painting on a canvas. It's like, an immersive experience of learning how to embody being an artist and making your work. Yeah, that's why my classes are four or five hours long. It's like a, like a mini immersion mm -hmm. for people. And we, honestly, we cover everything. And it's, I don't know, it's important for me to have like this one-to-one -one thing and, you know, wrap their brushes and, yeah. I don't know, you became, it's so interesting. Like you become like this coach life coach because you can see how people are oof, super stressed with the whole thing or they just jump into the paper and so you need to talk to them and be like you know it's just paper don't worry you yeah. coach them during the whole process yeah it's very liberating it is it's very, it makes so much sense because you know there is such a thing as art therapy yeah. so it's very therapeutic and you know you live in that space now most people enter that space for a little bit of time um, and don't mm -hmm. have it set up for themselves. So when they come to your space, they're already kind of entering a meditative, mm -hmm. calm space of beauty and order and creativity, you know, and it takes a little while for them to settle into that, I would imagine. Um, and yet they probably leave not only having created something and learned something, but leaving as though they've maybe been in a four hour yoga meditation class <laughs> perhaps as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly the purpose of the, of, the, of the class, to have these small groups and yes. just welcome them. Yes. Um, I had, um, at some point, I was thinking maybe I can hire a bigger space or, you know, I had that in mind months ago. And then I realized, no, I think I will lose that intimate yeah. gathering we have. So I'm keeping them small. And also I, I have... Lots of people asking for private classes. Yeah. Uh, so it means that it is something yeah. that people is looking for more than these big groups, cheap watercolor classes. You know, it's more something else. Yes, that's so And important. the connection. Like we can get yeah. so boxed into our little world and making our things that we forget to take a breath and like connect with the people around us who are also interested in similar things. Yeah, and it's such a good point too. For many artists are introverts because I mean, just the nature of the medium is that you're spending a lot of time and many hours alone. Again, almost in a meditative space, um, and so that's not unusual. And yet, we all as humans need to connect, need and want to connect with others. And so, you know, artists enjoy connecting with other yeah. similar creative types and other artists. And so, it does make sense that that you that there would be an avenue or for that kind of service. So for our audience listening who are artists who also love to share what they're doing and to teach and create a similar space, would you mind, would you be comfortable sharing how much you charge uh, either as an average or just in general for this individual and the foursome kind of classes as a, as a base point for our audience? Yeah, when I, when I teach um, the group for four people, it's 150 per person. When it's a private class, it's 250 pounds per person. And then I also have um, corporative classes. So I get people um, from Target, for example. Uh, uh, they send the designers. So I've got people from Target two times this year. And it was also for, for people. Um, that's a different story because um, it's more like a professional approach. Right. And, and it, although it was a small gathering, uh, and in December I'm teaching uh, to the interior designers of Harrods here in London, which is a big, big thing for me. Wow. And but that's, that's a 25 people class. Wow. Um, and that's also a different, you have to manage it in a different way. Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah that's a conversation you have to have, depending on, you know, the time or what do you want to learn? It's, I think they, they, they were looking for me more like kind of an activity with some information about social media. This is Harold's and Target. They were looking for watercolor, watercolor information and you know, how to do things. 
Mm. So different approaches. Yeah. So how did Target come to find you then and hire you? Um, I think they have, um, they offer it uh, to their employees uh, when they travel or they have like a week of holiday where they can travel wherever they want and they can take art classes. So basically the employees look for the class they want to take. So I think someone was follow, following me on Instagram, got in touch and, um, and gather other three pairs of people and they come to this class. And then when they go back, they, they were super happy and they shared the experience and other designers were like, ah, oh, we want, we also want. Oh, nice. Go oh, here. So they came uh, in a second group. Yeah, there you go. So the importance of the social media for building your yeah. brand. You never know who's looking. Yeah, you, know. you never know who's yeah. going to you. And Harrods was exactly the same. The, the woman told me, um, well, we love what you do, but also we want, we want information about how you do it yeah. <laughs> in social media. So it's like a kind of a watercolor Instagram yeah. workshop. So I would say Instagram has been, because I have been in contact for other companies, um, in the past, uh, I got in Pinterest, for example, uh, got in Touch, like all these other uh, brands. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't happen because we don't get in, in, a, in an agreement. Um, or, you know, they contact like all the artists and they might have a better offer in terms of uh, the costs or right. I don't know. Uh, so every time I get uh, someone uh, get in touch with me, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. So lots of times I send quotes, and, you know, and I might never hear again from them or. Right, yeah. right, definitely. Sure, that happens. But it sounds like it's totally working out for you because you, you almost couldn't take on too many more, you know, yeah. and still have time to create your own art. So what is it that, like, so you have your Etsy store and you sell from your website and you're doing these courses. Could you share which one of these, um, you know, like in order of, of significance is the most lucrative in terms of revenue? I think I have a very, very healthy business. I don't, I'm not, I don't need any of them, really. Like, I can't, I can't stop doing my workshops and I will still have, like, a good revenue and I will stop, you know. It's, I think it's just a healthy business I have. Yeah. Um, it's, every month is different. When I have workshops, like, obviously I have a very, really good income from the workshops, but I don't teach, like, the whole year. There are months when I decide, I need to rest, I need time for myself, so I don't teach in this season, so I don't have any income from the workshops. There are times when the prints sell really good, like now, November is a good season because, you know, Christmas is coming, but then maybe January, February is very slow, but people still looking for originals, so the whole month is yes. changing constantly. Sure. Sure, I, don't have, I don't have an answer. And I'm starting to move into um, our license also. So um, that's a new thing I've been working with in the last three, four months. And I'm, I think one of the goals of the next year is to go more in deep into the art license. Nice. So that would, so that would be, um, and what would be an example of that right now for you? Yeah, I'm working with a company um, which is uh, FY. I don't know the pronunciation in English. I always say fee, but that would be like a Spanish <laughs> pronunciation. And they sell original, they sell prints, sorry. And um, so they got in touch if I was interested in, in selling my prints with them. And I, 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 my, my first answer was no, thank you. And then they came back to me and they asked me, would you mind telling us why not? And I was like, well, uh, prints are a really good business of mine. And I would, you know, will be giving competition, basically, to myself. Yes. And, and when they told me, you know, it's a different market, like probably our followers are not your followers. Like, let's try it for a couple of months and see if you feel happy with it. So after a lot of thought, I, I agreed. And I put uh, in the website only some of the prints just to try it. But it's working really good for me. So I think I'm going to continue working with that. And um, 
that's one of the things uh, is working now. But all there is that I, I get um, some people asking sometimes for um, to use part of my brain of my brains uh, for the logos, for example, or for labels. Mm-hmm. So a uh, beer company here in London bought one of my watercolors with the purpose of using it in the label mm-hmm. for beer. So that's, that would be something I will never thought about. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. It's, it's, yeah, it's like a very organic beer. So they bought one of my, my circles with mm-hmm. leaves wow. and flowers in it. Yeah, that's awesome. So then you have to, I mean, that's fantastic. And so really, again, it's about getting your work out there Mm. um, in such a way that people find you and come to you. And part of that is from the discipline of creating daily. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, so like, okay, so your stores and your income vary from the the several things that you're doing. Do you have like a, like at the end of the year, can you say that there's a significant, um, winner between your Etsy store and your sales and your site or they just they kind of jostle for first position back and forth well I think the winner would always be my website in a way because my my originals are more expensive so that's that that's basically the reason okay yeah. that makes sense yeah so so you might sell more um, products on Etsy but you sell higher higher quality um, higher priced originals from your website is that what you're saying yeah, and I know in a way you think about it. If I have a sale on Etsy, a print, I'm all, I'm paying a fee to Etsy, and I'm paying um, the cost of the print. Yes. So if I sell, let's say, ten pounds, maybe my profit is four pounds, right? Or five pounds. When I sell a, an original, the cost is minimal. It's the right. paper and the watercolor, right? But I buy that in like big quantity, so. Right. Right. And so then you ship it yourself from your home yes. studio. The originals only. Yeah. Okay. Um, with the prints, I, I have a, a printer here in London that I love. And uh, he does everything for me. So he prints and ships. So you send the orders to him. Are they automated? The orders automatically go to the printer? And then no, I contact, I contact him and I send the orders. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. But, you know, it's, it's looking back in just the three years, basically, all that you've implemented and all that you put in place and all that you've learned, there's so many steps Mm -hmm. that it could be overwhelming if someone were looking at it from the beginning, but it all just happens one day at a time, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I, um, I want a friend of mine that is trying to do, uh, um, something with her art also asked me one day, uh, what books did you read for, you know, for your business plan. And I was like, I didn't read any book. What are you talking about? Yeah, I just did it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a whole process. It's yeah. not that I sit down one day and I didn't make a business plan. I wish I know how to do a business plan. It was just uh, the result of lots of things that happened in my life. Right. Um, I mean, I mean, things like how much to charge for the licensing. I mean, you know, I, you you don't know you have to research that right and you never necessarily start with like oh maybe a beer company will contact me <laughs> to license my design right. and that, that's not like something that goes into this is my art business plan yeah. you know it just happens along the way and it's sort of like um uh, the opportunity happens the, it's there and it's waiting well the opportunity it's not waiting but it's there ready to be accessed as you start doing the work because if you hadn't started doing the work uh, then and sharing it with the world the beer company would have gotten their art but they would have gotten from somebody else because they were doing the work yeah no you know what you learn also by making by mistakes or knowing as you say because i got like before target and all this i got like big companies are asking for for my workshops and i was pricing half like far too high so no one was coming back to me and I I lost like six, like five big brands mm. easily four or five big brands that got in touch never never came back to me and um and you do some research I contact other artists and I was like can you tell me like would you mind telling me how much to charge because they were looking for me and I see that they hire you yeah. So I, I'm just wondering. And yeah. artists usually are very kind. Sometimes they don't want to tell you, but usually they are kind. Yes. So I realized, like, oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm kind of very, very expensive. So I, I need to, to bring it down a little bit. 
Yeah. Um, and the same happened with other projects. Uh, when I, I gave a quote that it was, you know, too much. But honestly, I was also following one of my, my teachers I had in New York. Uh, when I, I asked her about our license for wallpaper from a French company that got in touch to me once. And, and this woman told me, like, look, like, you can be too cheap. You don't want to be cheap. Right. It's much better if you charge too much because you can always ne- like make a negotiation and bring it down. Absolutely. You can always bring it down, but it's impossible to be- bring it up. Yes. Right? Yes. So I moved from that uh, conversation I had with her, which, by the way, was via Instagram. <laughs> um, and I did that. And I lost some of the deals I had, but I learned in that process. And now it's working because I have found you know, the point when it works. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, And, you know, you could always like, if you did have a contract that was too high and you wanted the job because you have to value your time as well and consider whether it's worth your time. But then you can always ask them like, um, if they, if they say, well, that's too high, we're not going to hire you. Then you can come back and say, um, so what is your budget? You know, and you can say, we'll see if we can work something out. So whether it's you or somebody listening, you know, there are always potentially second chances if they first turn you down. Yeah, Uh, especially if they contact you. Yeah, and even if, yes, and even in the end, if uh, they come back and they say, well, we've already found somebody and we don't need you, then you can still possibly find out what their budget is so you would know for next time. You can say, Mm -hmm. okay, I can work with that budget. Please consider me for future, you know, so it doesn't have to be a, a total loss necessarily. Yeah, and also know that there's, you have just to do the research. And there's so many people out there willing to help. Um, When I started this art license thing experience I have now, uh, like magic, I don't know why, I I was um, contacted by three different um, people uh, asking me if I wanted to sell art with them. And what I did is I, I went into the websites, I looked for the artists working with them, I get I got in touch with them via Instagram and asked them. Good. Yeah. How is your experience? And how is working with them? Does it worth it? Like, yeah. You know, and thanks to that, I I said no to two contracts. Mm. Because the artists were like, Yeah, no, like, you know, <laughs> I'm not going back next year or I'm not I didn't say anything at all. Yeah. Or, or, you know, they don't, they don't answer you back when you have questions. So, so yes. I'm working with this company, like, because everybody I asked were happy. Yeah, yeah, nice. So it was like, okay, let's do this. And that's why I, I give it a shot. Yeah, excellent. Um, so just make research. That's yeah. something I learned because in the past, I also have made mistakes. I have worked with the wrong people and because I didn't, I didn't um, did my, uh, you know, the homework in a way yeah and the only way to not make mistakes is to not try and to not put yourself out there so that's yeah. that's the part of the tuition to the journey to success mm-hmm. so yeah that that makes so much sense Devani mentioned earlier you know the beauty of your surroundings uh, so artistically arranged you, know, you have your moon uh, paintings in the background and your flowers yeah. um, and so we have so enjoyed just just going to your website and to your Etsy store is like a visual feast uh, it's just so beautiful. Um, do you, and and you're you're so good at not just the painting, obviously, but the decorating side yeah. of it, the arranging of the photos in a very artistic, engaging manner. So you clearly have a wonderful, you know, like your years of photography, I think, helped you with that. So it's just a, a really beautiful portrayal, um, and we really appreciate all of that. Um, did you in your let me, I did want to ask one more question on the technical side of the things you sell in the Etsy store of the things you sell on Etsy you have cushions wall art and cards I believe um which ones are the best sellers uh, the prints the prints on paper are the best sellers okay. um I do pre I do sell lots of wall stickers also like that one but it's very seasonal in a way because there are times when I sell lots of them mm-hmm. and then they just stop. Like in November, I, I think I, I sold one, which is nothing, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, it moves up and down, but my prints always okay. are number one. Yeah. I also have temporary tattoos. The temporary tattoos are also good income. The, what is it? 
temporary tattoos. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you sell those on Etsy? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I saw you mentioned temporary tattoos in one of your workshop things, I think, but I didn't yeah. see that yet on the Etsy store. So we'll have to look for that. Yeah. Well, that, this has been so wonderful to connect with you and to hear about your incredible journey. You're such a beautiful person and beautiful soul. Um, and we love your, um, your painting barefoot and your yoga pants, you know, and, uh, amazing. Yeah, it's all of that. Um, so um, do you have in closing, do you have any final advice uh, or thoughts to share with our audience? And we'll make sure that we've linked to your beautiful site again, which is, ingridsanchez.com and creative ingrid um, on instagram so we'll link to all of that but any uh, final thoughts that you'd like to share with other creatives um just i think find what works for you i see a lot of people trying to copy others style i i get that we all go through the process of learning and you learn a lot by you know my imitation sometimes of others. But when someone, when I see that it's someone uh, that is really successful, it's because it's doing what it's good at, but also because it's their own voice yeah. and it's different. If you, if you are trying to copy others, you are, you're not bringing anything new to the table. So why would people, you know, come to you. You will go to the original one, in a way. Yeah. Um, and I, that comes, that's the voice of an artist, and that comes through practice only. You're not going to find it looking at Pinterest or Instagram. That only happens when you are doing things. Yeah. yeah. That, right. that, that's the main, my main, one of the main advices when I get people here also. Like, you know, don't try to do my flower. Like, do your own. Find your own. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, and, and I really like also how you say that, you know, if you're just getting started in art or in a different kind of art than what you've done before, you might need to copy in order to um, identify and establish technique, uh, but then to allow the free flow of your own expression to come through, you yeah. know, to cross to that bridge of your own art versus someone else. Does it make sense? Yes, and also understand that it is a process. It doesn't happen, you know, with one class. It doesn't happen in a week it's a whole it's a whole journey it's yeah. a daily um, process <laughs> yes yeah. It's yeah. A perfect slogan. <laughs> yeah definitely well thank you so much yes. for joining us we really enjoyed this time with you thank and you for all your advice and wisdom yeah all the thank issues. you so much for having me it has been a lot of fun it's the first time i have one of these podcasts with a camera in front of me it's nice seeing what you're talking with yeah it is we enjoy awesome. that as well it's a different connection so all thank right you. thank you bye bye, -bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.